So uh, Dilbert's canceled. Scott Adams apparently said in his show that uh, he moved as far away from black people as possible. But there's, there's a lot to break down. OK, so a bunch of newspapers are shutting down Dilbert. They're getting rid of Dilbert. Scott Adams said he knew this was happening. He, his income is gone. His reputation is destroyed. He's never coming back from this. I don't know what's going on, but uh, hey, look, if Scott Adams truly feels the way he feels and he's speaking honestly about his feelings, I respect him for doing so. Now, in his statements and assessments, I want to point out that I believe he is mostly incorrect, mostly incorrect. But there's important things you need to understand. So what happened here is Rasmussen did a poll and found that something like half of black people polled said they did not agree with the phrase, it's, it's OK to be white. And he said, if that poll is true and half of black people feel it's not OK to be white, then you've got a very serious problem. And he says, that's a hate group then. OK, it's a poll. I don't think that's indicative of a whole lot. But he goes on to say then, if the poll is true, he advises people to move his white people to move as far away from black people as possible. And then goes on to explain, that's what he did. Yo, Scott, you're wrong. Uh, but I understand why you would feel the way you do based off a poll like this. And I do understand why people feel that way, especially in places like Chicago, because you will find that there is a correlation between the racial demographics of a neighborhood and the crime being committed there. The problem is it may be a spurious correlation. I get a lot of people that, that, that comment and be like, Tim should recognize the race demographics of a neighborhood and the crime levels. And I'm just like, you know, some of the highest crime in the Chicagoland area is in a wealthy white district. And I'm talking violent crime. You know why? Because poor people of any race don't go rob other poor people for the most part. So I will say this. Having grown up in a, in a, in a racially diverse place like Chicago, but heavily segregated, I did not find race to be the determining factor in whether or not crime was going to be committed against you. Because to be honest, I was only ever mugged by two white guys. But I don't think white had anything to do with it. They were from the South Side. I think poverty had everything to do with it. And then you can probably look at history's, history of race and poverty, probably make some correlations there. My issue with this is, one, I don't think Dilbert should be canceled because Dilbert as a product is not the same politics as Scott Adams. I don't I, we're not canceling Avengers movies because Chris Evans is kind of a dickhead on Twitter or something like that. Now, nah, he's all right. He's not so bad. I liked it when he went and met with Republicans. But, you know, you get like Mark Ruffalo and you get these lefties who go on and they spit, you know, this this hateful garbage and nobody cares about that. But let's 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 break this down. Let's break this down because I, I, I think it's important. You know exactly what Scott Adams said. The media, of course, is lying, cutting the context of what he said out to make it sound substantially worse. That being said, I still think what Scott Adams said is pretty bad, and I got some data to back up my argument against what Scott said. But OK, here we go. First, let me uh, let me play for you the clip from Scott Adams so you can understand what he said and why people are arguing. OK, is Twitter. Twitter's really giving me the business on this one. Come on. Twitter videos don't like playing sometimes. And now I can't even get here. We go. Twitter load. Do I have to blame Elon Musk for this? Here it is. So if, if you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not OK with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get the fuck away. Where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say, nah, that's, I'm sorry. I just, no, dude, come on. This is what I really can't stand about race politics. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to start shouting out all of the really awesome black people. Like, should I have to do that? No, of course not. We've had a bunch of people on, on Timcast IRL. I've got friends. We've got employees. What, why would, why would I look at, a poll that says white liberals hate white people and then be like, better get away from white people. It's like, no, just get away from those people who are bad. I don't it, it, it really pisses me off and it bums me out when there could be someone of any background. Maybe they're gay. Maybe they're trans. Maybe they're straight. Maybe they're, you know, whatever. Black, white, Mexican, Asian. I don't care about the identity. And they come out and they start telling you why the Constitution is so important. They start 
They're, let, let, let's say they're a military veteran who saved a bag of puppies from a burning building and then immediately ran across the street and then saved two small children from a different burning building and then came out and then ran in to save the American flag from, from the fire and waved it, super ripped, but he's black. Like, that's the problem. A person's character is not determined by how they look. And, and what happens is people take surface level correlations and they're like, well, because I see a, a, li- a large percentage of this group, each individual now must be judged the same and I'm going to get away from them. So that's why I don't appreciate what Scott Adams is saying. I can respect him speaking his mind and being honest. You know, I there's, think there's no fixing this. <clears throat> no fixing. This can't be fixed. Right. This can't be fixed. You just have to escape. So that's what I did. I went to a neighborhood where, you know, I have a very low black population. Because unfortunately, <laughs> there, you know, there's a Dude. high correlation between the density. And this is according to Don Lemon, by the way. <laughs> Um, so here I'm just quoting. Okay, okay, hold on. Don Lemon did come out and say that. I covered it. Don Lemon had this 2013 diatribe about how black neighborhoods need to stop littering and clean up and go to school and other, other stuff like that. Quoting Don Lemon when, when he notes that the, when he lived in a uh, mostly black neighborhood, there were a bunch of problems that he didn't see in white neighborhoods. So this is what I, this is what I can't stand, man. I think it's my perspective having grown up on the south side of Chicago. I grew up in an area that was like very Polish, but it had Mexicans. It had a lot of black people. Uh, Mostly the black community was was, uh, north of 47th Street. But where, you know, near our park, there was a lot of black families. The north of 47th was almost entirely the black community. And so that did create weird racial animosity. But I never, I never took that to be like, the reason someone did something wrong was because of their race. That just doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It, I just, I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense to me. And I'll show you why. This is the neighborhood of Hyde Park in Chicago, okay? Hyde Park, it's the 41st of the 77 community areas of Chicago. It is located on the south side near the shore of Lake Michigan. Hyde Park's official boundaries are 51st Street, Hyde Park Boulevard, on the north of blah, 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 blah. You know why Hyde Park is relevant? 24.4% black. That is almost double the, the uh, uh, ratio uh, in the black population for this neighborhood is a very, very, is a highly dense black neighborhood. It is seen by many people to be a very prominent black neighborhood. In fact, I think Obama lived there. I'm pretty sure they got a picture of Obama on here somewhere. They got Obama here. Hey, look at that. Obama lives there. You go down to Hyde Park and you'll see a lot of well-off families, a lot of black families. When you go and search the stats, the safety rating of Hyde Park is above average, and they recommend you live there. So it may be that we see in many areas a correlation between black neighborhoods and crime. My opinion has always been more so that poverty plays a role because the people who live in Hyde Park have a higher income eh, for the most part. I mean, not not completely, but look at this, a two bedrooms, two grand per month. And it's again, 20, about 25 percent black. Whereas other neighborhoods are like 13 and there and there are some that are like 70 or whatever. But my point is, this is a safe neighborhood with twice the ratio of black people. It it feels kind of stupid to me to have a conversation about this not being black. But I suppose I can say having having grown up on the south side and experienced this, what I can say is that that was that was never what I got out of it. The, The gangbangers in my neighborhood were like Latino and white people. The Latin Kings was a gang on the South Side, and they're the Latin Kings. They're not black people. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people who are far left who agree with segregation and people who are right who, who, who think race plays a bigger role. But anyway, here's what happens. Rasmussen runs this uh, poll. It's okay to be white. 72% of Americans agree. 12% disagree. They say... Black people, uh, 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 black Americans only, 53% agree, 26% disagree. So, so just to clarify, it's only half of black Americans agree that it's okay to be white. 26% disagreed. That's a lot of racist black people. Okay. I mean, people of any race can be racist. But come on, man. Look, Scott Adams has said some good things. He's had some bad things. He's been roasted before. But to say, I got away from them and you should too, it's just... Bro, come on, man. That's just no. What am I supposed? How, how do you got to clarify what you mean by that? Because I would tell people this. I say get away from cities. Get away from high crime areas. 
You go to the south side of Chicago, you go where, by where I grew up, you'll see higher crime rates and mostly white people. You'll go to other poor neighborhoods that are mostly black people. You might see high crime rates, too. In fact, in some of these areas, you'll see the worst crime rates. But then how do you find the correlation between these between the crime and the race when it's high here and low here and high there? You get my point. Some might argue there is a correlation. I would argue I think poverty plays a bigger role. Poverty and I don't know. I, th- I think I think poverty plays a big role. Of course, then when it comes to poverty, you will see there's a correlation between poverty and other factors like perseverance, work ethic, intelligence, uh, cultural traditions, family. And I think more than race, stay away from people who have no dads. Right. W- w- would that be like a better statement to make? Then you can make an argument about how the black community has higher levels of fatherlessness. But that's not race. These are cultural things that, you know, I'll put it this way. Conservatives come out and they're like, Democrats are trying to destroy the family. Yes. OK, thank you. It's not a race thing. White people who grow up in bad, bad families, black people, Asian people, anybody who grows up with a bad family, of course, is going to have a harder life, make less income, have lower intelligence. I don't know, man. Here we go. Look at how CNN reports that Scott Adams' long-running Dilbert comic strip has been dropped by the USA Today Network. Hundreds of newspapers, the Cleveland Plain Dealer, LA Times, Washington Post, and other publications. Adams called black Americans a hate group. No, he didn't. He said the 26% of black people who don't think it's okay to be white are a hate group. Well, okay. I mean, that's his opinion based on this. I will say, though, he probably went a little too far when he said white people should get away from black people. Take a look at this. Scott Adams tweeted, it's worse than I thought. The Gallup numbers on race relations in the U.S. are striking. They make a very good case that we are not on the right track with a racial essentialism approach, which is the underlying theme of too many DEI initiatives. I agree that we <clears throat> should not be segregating and promoting CRT. Would you say relations between white and black people are very good, somewhat good, somewhat bad, or very bad? Among both black adults and white adults, it's been dropping precipitously. You know, if we go back to 2013, 72% of white people said good, 66, 66% of black people said good. You go back to 2002, 70% to 68%. You know, there was some unity back then. What happened? Now it's 33 to 43%. White people and black people are feeling the heat. I'm, I, I can't stand this, this trash, man. I'm, I'm not saying that we're going to have a world where everybody's holding hands and singing songs under the rainbows. But I'm saying I'm here to judge people based on the content of their character. And the one thing that really bothers me, as I stated earlier, if I got a friend who is male, female, who is black, white, who is trans, gay, whatever, and someone judges their morals, their ethics, their principles based on something about their identity, I'm just going to I'm going to say no to that. It's their actions. OK, you want to make an argument like drag queen story? Hour. Yeah, but what about drag queen story? That's an action. Gays against groomers opposes that. You know, I don't care if you're a dude who likes dudes and you want to go live your life and be happy. But when you're giving kids books with graphic material in it, that's an action that I oppose. And straight people do it and gay people do it. And those are bad people. All right. I'm saying like a small minority of those people. Obviously, not every single person's a pedo, but pedos exist and they come in all shapes and sizes. So, no, that's bad. So to come out and be like, oh, you know, all black people. Oh, no, no. So uh, apparently they have the quote here where he said something like, this is it. My career is over. Let me see. My reputation for the for the rest of my life is destroyed. You can't come back from this. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I, I would ask why say it then? But I think the answer is quite simple. Scott Adams is telling you what he really thinks and how he really feels. I can respect it. I disagree with it, but he's being honest with with you. Adams could not immediately be reached for comment by Reuters, but on his YouTube channel, he confirmed his comic was being dropped and said he'd expected that to happen. By Monday, I should be mostly canceled. Some of my uh, so, so most of my income will be gone by next week. My reputation for the rest of my life is destroyed. You can't come back from this. Someone responded on Twitter saying, Canton shouldn't. Everyone has a right to an opinion and express it. No one has a right to have that opinion exist in a vacuum where private companies can't disavow any association with it. I mean, there's interesting questions. It's like I was saying, I don't know about canceling Dilbert. Maybe if the Dilbert comics, if they had Dilbert come out and he was just like totally racist. But this idea that you can't have an opinion and then work in public makes no sense to me. We can say, I can say, I don't like Scott Adams' opinion. I think he's wrong. I think he's missing a lot of context. And I think these questions are very difficult to answer. And, uh, and I will say this, too. I'm not, a, I'm not a nature or nurture guy. I'm a both. I think nature and nurture play a role in a lot of things. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to tell you how much of each. But I imagine 
You take a, a white dude from Britain, from central London as a baby, a white baby, and you raise him in any ghetto, favela or whatever, and they are going to ad- adhere to the culture of that area. I do think, however, genetics will play a role in, in some of the uh, behaviors or some of the things they do, because to act like genetics don't play a role, I think is stupid. But of course, then you'll get the left being like race essentialism and biological determinism is completely wrong. It's a blank slate. No, it's not. It's not a blank slate. I just think that social conditioning is, predo- is, is like the dominant force in that you take any human and you, you raise them right and they will almost entirely be good people doing the right thing and, and, and be smart. I think what I'm trying to say is there are racial differences, but they're so minimal compared to proper diet, nutrition, education, and access. We can see this across basically every racial demographic that technological, how much technology a, a group of people has access to changes the rate at which they have kids. So it's like environment has a very, very pronounced impact and, 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 and social behaviors too. So I don't know, man. I always think about this with Hyde Park because I'm just like, I, I wish I could live in that place. Like U, I, U of C is down there, one of like the great colleges or whatever. Obama lived down there. And it's a South Side neighborhood right on the lake. It's beautiful. I've had friends, black families that I would hang out with, beautiful houses that were so much better than mine, wealthier. And I always thought about how, I, here's what I think. I think Democrat policy inten- was intentionally designed to create racism and destroy the black community and, and, and black families. If you go back to like Black Wall Street, the great success of black Americans, I think many on the left will acknowledge this shows the capabilities and rejects the outright racism that white supremacists would have. But the Democrats were the white supremacists and they destroyed Black Wall Street and they bombed neighborhoods and they destroyed lives. And that's why I understand people like Derek Bell. He says segregation was a good thing because it allowed black people to have their own banks, their own community, their own schools. He believes that ending segregation was a bad idea. I think he's completely wrong. I think the problem is racism, and I think Democrats, for the most part, are racist and pretend they're not racist. They implement policies of welfare and other race-based policies, and they did uh, housing covenants that destroyed the black community, specifically targeting them, and now are trying to act like they're the great heroes when they're actually destroying everybody. Breaking up the family doesn't just hurt one racial group, it hurts everybody. I look at Hyde Park, and I see evidence to the inverse. That there are wealthy, successful people of all races. Oprah Winfrey and Will Smith are great examples of extremely wealthy black people. And, and, and that's why I'm just like, yo, racism is only going to make the divisions worse, make poor Americans fight each other. And it's why I hate critical race theory. This idea that a homeless white veteran is privileged and Oprah Winfrey is not is stupid. The idea that the white gangbangers from Chicago who caused problems for my neighborhood were like somehow better people based on the color of the skin is the stupidest idea ever. They were degenerates. They were disgusting, bad people. And not all of the gangbangers, but a lot of them were. Some of them were all right. I'll get be completely honest. I, I, I don't even want to generalize the gangbangers, but like they tended to be bad. That's why they're in gangs. They're stealing stuff. They're doing stuff. There was a, a one gang, the Pope's they were actually all right. They would just chill and smoke pot and like kind of left everybody alone. And everybody knew like, just don't screw with them because they're, they're all friends with each other. But then there were some other gangs that would, they would steal from people. They'd mug people. And uh, in my neighborhood, it was, it was, it was like a, an, an eclectic gang. It was a diverse, diverse, diversity. When you're getting mugged, it's like a white dude with blonde hair and a Mexican guy and an Asian guy in the back. And you're like, oh, look at that. You know, diversity in the gangs as they're taking your money from you. Maybe that's just me. And I wonder if because a lot of these Democrats, these liberals grew up in wealthy white suburbs, hearing this narrative, they believe it. And it's like, if you actually experienced this, you'd be like, I've had moments where the dude coming to my defense was Mexican or was black and the the aggressor was white or the drunk driver was white or sometimes the drunk driver was black. You see that in a place like Chicago and you're just like, I don't think it's race. I don't think the race of the guy is what caused it. Now, look. I don't know about Scott Adams. He knows his life is destroyed. That's what he's saying. And he decided to say it anyway. All right. Well, you know what, look, man, I think your opinions are incorrect. I do think that there's there's a discussion to be had about race and genetics, nature versus nurture. There's no reason to silence a conversation on on, um, 
how people develop. I just think environment plays the biggest role. Epigenetics, food, nutrition, things like that. You malnourish someone and they're going to they're going to end up, you know, lower intelligence. Doesn't matter their race. So that's what I want to just say to Scott Adams, because I think Scott, I don't think Scott Adams is a bad guy. I think he just gets things wrong and he's allowed to get things wrong. And I think things like this should be a learning opportunity to just come out and be like, we are terrified. So we're severing all of these contracts with you. I think is stupid. Dilbert is a comic about a guy who works in an office. Dilbert, just because Scott Adams said something one time you don't like, it's stupid. It's stupid. Whatever, man. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. So we went a little bit longer, but there's a lot to talk about. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.